What's up everybody? Welcome back to Real Ninja. Today we're going to be talking about trap rigs. How to make trap rigs and use them for fishing for ling cod. Um, there's various baits that can be used from live sand dabs to dead bait like sardines and uh, mackerel. And we're going to show you how to, how to set up your rigs, uh, what kind of line to use. Um, you can even use some artificial baits like this Custom Crafts Bad Dab. I'll show you that real quick. The Custom Crab Bad Dab looks like a, a sand dab. These comes in different colors too. Um, you're going to need some rubber bands. We're going to be using the Mustad 3 aught treble hook, wire hook. And we're going to use the Owner's 5 aught cutting point hook for the nose hook. And um, when it comes to line, I would say use anywhere from 30 to 50 pound test. Uh, you could use some leader line like this Andes. It's good line. It's nice, stiff, straight line. I got this 40 pound Eisner line. The mono, that's a good line to use. You could use some Berkeley Trilene 50 pound test. And uh, sometimes some people like to use uh, fluorocarbon because it's a little bit abrasive resistant than mono. Mono will stretch a little bit, especially. Uh, Trilene seems to have more stretch. Eisner's a stiffer line. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the um, because of the cost of the the fluorocarbon. I'm not gonna use that. It's uh it's not necessary because these fish are not line shy. So you can get away with using heavy line, like 50 pound if you want. And you can use these big hooks because ling cod are just super aggressive and and they're gonna eat it. Uh, they're not line shy, so all right. So I'm gonna use the 40 pound test Eisner line. That's mono line. Um, that's what I'm gonna use on this trap rig. And the first thing I'm gonna do is put the snail knot, the snail hook on. This is a five aught owner's cutting point hook, and I'm gonna run it. The first thing I'm gonna do is is run the tag in through the eye of the hook, and I'm gonna pull out about a foot. And to create the snail on the bite of the Eisner line, I'm gonna use this 20 pound test. Power Pro braid. I'm gonna cut off a piece about a foot and a half. So now I got the, the line running through the eye and the hook. Then I'm gonna take this little tube, this little tube like you get off a can of um, brake cleaner or carburetor cleaner and I cut it till it's about two inches long. I'm gonna lay the tube parallel to the shank of the hook with the, with the tip of the tube just going, going past the, uh, the eye and the hook. Then I'm going to lay the line also parallel to everything with a few inches coming past. Like that. And then I'm going to take the, uh, the braid and I'm just going to start wrapping it at, at the bottom section of the hook. And I'm going to wrap it up with even, even wraps so the lays don't cross over each other. Just make it come up the shank of the hook going around everything. I'm going to put about... 15 wraps on here. This is going to be an adjustable sliding hook. So you can set it for length on different baits. Um, you know, sometimes when you get a, some mackerel or whatever, some of them are five inches, some of them are seven inches. So you want to be able to move this nose hook around to where you can adjust it so it fits the bait you're using. Now that, now that I got my wraps on here, you see those wraps I got going around? Okay, so now I'm gonna take the end that I wrapped up with, I'm gonna pinch everything off here, and then I'm gonna feed the end of, of this braid down through that tube so that it comes out the other side. Then I'm going to pinch it off here and I'm going to pull the tube out the same direction I fed the line through it. And now my lines stick it out. It's, 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 it runs through all those wraps we just created. And then I'm just going to, I'm going to tighten it up by pulling both ends. I'm going to take these pliers and uh, take a couple wrap, take a little bit of a bite on this line so I can and then I'll grab it with my teeth on the other side so I can make it tight. Okay, so now it's nice and tight. And then I'm gonna trim the tag in 
I'm just going to take my knife and trim it with like, I don't know, a quarter inch out from the knot on both ends. And when you're done, this knot will look like this. And this is a knot, like I said, it's adjustable, so you can you can um, slide this slide this hook to where you want to set it for the length. It'll slide up and down the line, moisten it to reduce friction, but you can slide it up and down. Next, I'm going to tie on this Mustad 3 aught treble hook. It's a wire hook, and I like to use a clinch knot, and especially with fluorocarbon because fluorocarbon is pretty good for resisting abrasion, but it can be brittle and it can be damaged when you're tying a knot. This is a great knot to use for fluorocarbon, um, but I use this knot for a lot of stuff. I just take the tag in, cross it over the, uh, the bite of the line, and I put like seven or eight twists in it. Like that, and then I take the tag in and I put it through the, the loop in the bottom above the eye. Then I moisten it, always moisten it, especially with fluorocarbon, it's sensitive to uh, heat abrasion. And then I pull it tight, <clears throat> set the knot like that. Sometimes I'll use my thumbnail and just kind of go on top of the knot and kind of push it down a little bit too. It helps make it tight. And then I got the tag in. I always make my tag in long enough to where I could put a half hitch on the tag in right up against the other knot. That way, if it should slip, because this, this knot can slip sometimes, especially on certain types of line, not so much on a, a, a larger or a heavy mono like this, but sometimes with like smaller monos or braids, it can slip, but I always just tie a half hitch on there. And then I put my thumbnail on the loop and push it right up against the other knot. And then I trim that tag end off of there and that's good to go. So there's, there's the, like that and that's what we have now so I want this leader to be about four and a half five feet long so I'm just gonna guess about like like this about that much and I'll cut that off and get my three-way swivel so now I'm just, I'm a, I got a three-way swivel here. I'm going to take the three-way swivel and I'm going to use the same knot as I used on the treble hook. Clench knot. Same thing, put a round turn on the tag end and use my thumb to push the knot up against close to the other knot and get a little closer than that. Doesn't have to be right there, it just needs to be close. Then trim it off. All right, now I'm gonna tie on a snap swivel for my dropper. And this is 40, 40 pound test Eisner line on the, the leader. I'm gonna use 15 or 20 pound trialing for my dropper so if my weight gets hung up and I can't get out, I could break it off and at least I won't lose everything. That's another reason why these wire hooks are, are kind of good because they're strong enough to catch the fish, but 
if you got hung up real bad with one of these, you could bend it out. You could pull on it and bend it out. So I'm going to tie the same knot on here. Another clinch knot. And I want this to be about 12 to 16 inches long for my for my dropper. So I'm going to I'm going to guesstimate that's about 18 inches. That'll give me some play for my knot. Same thing, clinch knot. So that's, uh, that ends up being about 16 inches. That's cool. So the whole leader is the leader length from uh, the snaps from the three way. From the three way to the to the end of the hook is about five feet. And then you've got about 16 inches for your dropper on which with a snap swivel and then you use like a one pound ball or a one pound torpedo for your weight. So let's go ahead and uh, put some bait on here. I'll show you how to bait this up. As long as I'm sitting here and it's already here. Let's just go ahead and start with the sand dab. Uh, sand dabs is one of uh, the lingcod's favorite and best baits for lingcod. Uh, a lot of people call them lingcod candy. And obviously you can get artificials like this from Custom Craft. And um, you would bring them up pretty much the same way you would um, a, a mackerel or something, which I'm gonna show you next. But you would go through the bottom jaw and out the nose like that then you would feel for the gill plate and go just behind the gill plate but miss the spine don't put it through a spine go off the side of the spine just behind its gill plate and hook it in the back and then adjust the length of your knot like that and that, that's your trap rig on a sand dab or if you wanted to you could stick it with both hooks and have one hook up. So there it is through the nose, behind the gill plate, in the meat in the back, but not in the spine. All right, so let's take this out. Let me get some, uh, some other bait and I'll show you. All right, so I went down to the local seafood market and I got these round shad. They didn't have mackerel, so I got the round shad. These work. I've used these. I caught three lingcod on it last week. So how you would rig this is uh, you're going to get you some rubber bands. You got these little dental rubber bands like these. And uh, first thing I'm gonna pull this I'm gonna pull this uh, nose hook up out of the way and then I'm gonna hook this fish in the back I'm gonna hook it in the back right about here like that then I'm gonna take my dental rubber band I got two of them in my fingers right here and I'm gonna run that up over the tail around that hook shank to hold it to the body. Then I'm gonna take the nose hook and I'm gonna nose hook it through the bottom jaw and out through the top of the nose. Then I'll hold the hook and adjust the length like that. And that's ready to fish. Just like this.
you know, because I'm using a rod that's, um, you know, it's got some good sensitivity on the tip, but it's got a good backbone to it. And I'm fishing with braided line, 50, 50 pound test braided line. So it'll drop down straighter. It's less buoyant. It's less, less uh, elastic. It doesn't stretch as much as, as a mono does. So I want, I want braided line when I'm dropping down. A lot of times when I'm fishing for lingcod, you know, I could be anywhere from 60 to over 200 feet. I want that thing to drop straight down. As soon as it hits the bottom, you know, I, I take, I close my bell or, or lock my drag and I take one crank up on it and then I'm just tapping the bottom. I want to stay right off the bottom. I just tap the bottom every once in a while with my weight just to make sure I'm still there because that structure is going to change while you're drifting in a boat. This is for drifting in a boat fishing. Um, this is not shore based fishing. So you're drifting over these reefs in the boat and you're just tapping the bottom, but that structure is going to rise and fall. So you're going to want to tap the bottom every once in a while to make sure you're, you're near the bottom, but you don't want to drag it because you're going to get hung up and snagged and lose gear. So you just, every once in a while, tap that bottom just to make sure it's still there. Sometimes it'll come up on you and your weight will run into it and you'll have to take a crank up to get up over that hump. And then when you come down the other side, you'll have to let out a little bit of line just to get back down there because that structure is going to be rising and falling and elevation changes on the structure. So just try to stay as close to the bottom as you can without dragging any of your gear so you don't get hung up. And then lingcod will be down there, you know, in the crevices between the rocks or in a hole. And when that bait comes by, they're going to ambush it. They'll ambush it. They'll strike out. They'll grab it. When you feel that rod load up, he starts pulling on it. Just give it a couple, a couple reels, reel down on it a couple times, and then start lifting them up and start fighting them up to the boat. But don't horse it. You want to keep them off the bottom. You know, as soon as when you start, when your rod loads up and starts pulling down, give it a couple cranks, start lifting a little bit, and then just start steady reeling on them nice and slow. Everything easy so you don't pull the hook out of his mouth or, or anything like that. Just bring them up to the boat nice and easy. You got them off the bottom. A lot of times they'll try to dart, dart back down to the bottom and get you wrapped up in a rock, go between some rocks or under a rock or something. You don't want to do that. So when it loads up, couple cranks up on them, lift, and just start easy reeling all the way up. And you, and you got them, hopefully. <laughs> sometimes, they, sometimes stuff happens and, and they come off. I mean, it's fishing, but generally. So let me show you one more way to, to do this. Uh, if you don't have, you know, let's say you're out on the boat fishing, you want to use a trap rig, but you don't have time to uh, to snail the, the knot on the hook like this. Say you don't have time to make one of these. Well, there's another way you can do it, and I'll show you how real quick. Uh, Captain Kwan from GoldenEye 2000 showed me this. It's a good trick, and it's fast, and it's easy. You take your hook. All right, so I got three rubber bands on my finger. I'm gonna take my hook run my line down through the hook and then I'm just going to wrap this around here until it gets nice and tight. This is a fast easy way to do it when you don't have time to snail your knots. Now same thing, adjustable. Wet your line and you can slide this up and down. And that's a that's a quick way if you don't have time to snow your knot, you could just use some rubber bands and get that thing attached on there. Then you go and get your hook and tie your hook, your treble hook on here, and that's it. It's pretty easy. Makes quick work of it. So, anyways, that's trap rig in a nutshell. I hope that helps you. Um, it's a very effective way for fishing for lingcod. And remember when you're out on a party boat and you, they say we're going for rockfish, you may not be fishing in an area where there's a lot of lingcod. So a lot of times you're not really fishing in a lingcod area. I know sometimes you think you associate rockfish with lingcod, but that's not always the case. I mean, somebody might get lucky and get one, but there's certain times when you're fishing rockfish, you're really targeting rockfish, but there's areas that hold both rockfish and lingcod. So I would ask the captain, talk to the captain, and see what they recommend, you know, before you just uh, put all your faith in a trap rig when there's not, it's not really a lingcod area 
and then everybody else is filling up their bag with fish and you're not i mean smaller fish will bite this some of the hard heads will get this um and aggressive some of the bigger more aggressive rockfish will but you're not you may find yourself with a short bag or somebody else giving you the welfare fish because you were trying so hard for that link cod but you're really not in that link cod area so don't think like every time you're rock fishing there's going to be rock fish or link cod there because that's not always the case ask the captain and, and uh and see what they advise you to do or recommend because if they say they're going for link cod i would definitely do this go down to the seafood market get you some fish like this you know a, about a seven five to seven inch fish or you can go out and catch some sand dabs and use sand dabs like i said that's link cod candy use a bait like this when you're fishing for link cod and you will you'll get some nice fish um i would definitely rather you if i know i'm fishing an area that's got link cod i want to use this instead of uh the flies but the flies work too i mean don't get me wrong but i like these trap rigs because they tend to pull bigger fish but again make sure you're in that area because if you're not on top of a link cod or something this is a round shad and they didn't have mackerel the size i wanted they had some big mackerel and i didn't want that i want about a five to seven inch fish like this and these work i caught three three lings and a uh, and a hard head on one of these last week and uh i'll also show you something not to do because i was being lazy and i didn't want to i didn't i didn't want to take the time to tie my knots right and i just kind of did some my rod's bending a little bit <laughs> no, I think this is. Oh, damn it, dude! You know why? Because I didn't snail that top up. I, I went through it. I knew I was chancing it. I shouldn't have did it because I lost my biggest fish on it. But I, what I did wrong was instead of snailing my hook onto the bite of the line or using the rubber bands, I just. I just took the, my line, folded it in half, and then pushed the loop through the eye and the hook like that. And then I just wrapped that around the hook and came back up like this. Now, that's where it broke because the fish was pulling on the treble hook and this compromised, this right here, whenever you do something like that, you're compromising the integrity of your line. You probably lose, not only that, if the, if, the, if, the, if the hook has like a little notch right there where the where the eye and the shank come together, that could be a little sharp spot the line can get stuck in, but even if it wasn't, even if it was a perfect circle, whenever you do something like this, you're compromising the integrity of the line. You probably lose 35, 40% of your strength right there by doing that. So not a good idea. I knew I was taking a chance. I did it anyways because I was be honestly I wasn't prepared. Um, I didn't have some of my gear with me, and um, I was just I was cheating. And I knew I was taking a chance, and I paid for it. I lost I lost a nice fish. So don't do that. Um, don't be like me. You know, prep your gear. I usually prep my gear, but you know I've been real busy lately with school and everything, but. Prep your gear, have your gear ready, make sure you got everything you need with you so you can repair your rigs, make your rigs, um, do it on the, on the go, like while you're riding out if you want, or do it the night before, but just try to make sure you, you have the right stuff and uh, don't cut corners like I did because I paid for it. Um, I thought I would try to be sneaky and it, I knew I was taking a chance and yeah, it didn't work out for me, so don't do that. Uh, unless you like losing fish, which I don't think you do, or you probably wouldn't be watching fishing videos or how-to videos about fishing. So, anyways, I hope that helps you all out there. I hope, uh, you know, you go out there and try this and it has su success for you and it works out and uh, you enjoy using it. Uh, if you got any questions, if I left anything out or forgot anything, uh, just leave a comment below and um, I will reply if you would like, um, if you have a question or if there's something else you want to see, let me know and I'll see what I can do. Now i got to clean up my dang table. Anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, please like, subscribe, share, and most of all, stay fishy. We'll see you out on the water.